This presentation is about a tool that I've developed to facilitate load balancing across ECS services using uh, the Battle Proven Nginx um, HTTP server. My contact details are available in the slide and at the end of this presentation together with the open source tool GitHub repo. Before getting into the tool itself, I want to take you a little bit on the journey that I've been on uh, together with my team around the adoption of containerization, the different choices between ECS and Kubernetes, the choice of ECS, the hurdles with ECS, as well as uh, what we've worked on to overcome those hurdles. A lot of people don't know this, but containerization was invented primarily for three main reasons. Uh, there was a need to simplify the management of uh, services with high availability at scale, and so the concept of a cluster of servers where you deploy your services. There was also a need for a seamless integration with CI CD tools, and that's where a immutable image uh, from a um, Docker repository comes in really handy. But there was also a really strong push towards cost effectiveness because all sorts of cloud locking solutions have a tendency of becoming very expensive very, very quickly. And containerization is designed to increase the density of services per server, thus using uh, the underlying hardware to a much better extent. While the industry standard for containerization is Kubernetes, uh, there's no doubt about it, uh, Kubernetes is very well designed for bigger clusters and it comes with its level of complexity as well as uh, um, cost in terms of maintenance and um, that sometimes requires people that are dedicated to the management of Kubernetes. And it's also not necessarily the cheapest containerization solution available. For example, on AWS, it is necessary to actually run a control plane that is charged 140 bucks a month and it's, it's a kind of sunk cost that you can't get rid of. If we look at Amazon ECS instead, um, it offers basic container orchestration capabilities, and it, but it's very well suited to small clusters um, where you don't have hundreds of servers, for example. Uh, it integrates really well with all the AWS services, specifically with uh, CloudWatch, as well as the VPC, as well as the CI CD tools of code deploy and code pipeline, for example. It is really cheap to run, and when I say cheap to run, I also am referring to the spot instances that and whose request can be managed by the ECS cluster for us, thus reducing the cost of uh, running the servers on Amazon up to 90%. It is a lock-in solution, unfortunately, like most of the AWS ecosystem, but let's be honest, not that many companies are looking into having multiple cloud deployments. And if you are like me uh, in an environment where we just need a, a robust uh, containerization capability, ECS works. Even though you lose secrets and you lose configuration management that were baked into uh, Kubernetes, in reality, those functionalities are available from other AWS services if you choose to use them. One of the biggest hurdles in understanding uh, ECS is the quality of the documentation, unfortunately. Um, learning curve is still quite steep. and. There is an issue where a lot of the services that you have to use have uh, separate documentation and you have to spend quite a bit of time to understand how everything actually fits together. There's not a comprehensive guide. But the biggest hurdle that I've personally found in using ECS is the quality of ingress networking available by uh, Amazon, the various ALBs, ELBs, and network load balancer. The reason why this is a hurdle is they are quite inflexible and they are also quite pricey for what they really offer. The way I like to describe this is that all these load balancing solutions are just not as good as Nginx. They are too limiting in terms of uh, what you can do in terms of routes as well as you are rewriting and the type of services that you can actually reverse proxy. And they are kind of hard to configure. Uh, there's a lot of names that you need to understand, you know, listeners, uh, rules, um, placement groups, etc. It's it's actually quite fiddly. And to be perfectly honest, nothing really beats the simplicity and the expressiveness of the Nginx configuration file. So the question is, can we have it all? And the spoiler is, yes, we can. But before getting into that, let's understand what we mean by can we have it all. The problem can be described as follows. Do we want a load balancing solution that integrates natively with ECS, and yet it is as easy to configure as Nginx? 
And here's the solution. ECS Ingress, which is an open source um, tool that is available on GitHub, is just a small uh, Golang executable that spawns a vanilla Nginx instance and manage its configuration for you. Uh, it is loosely modeled after uh, Ingress Nginx, uh, but it is 10 times simpler. It's 200 lines of code at most. All it does under the hood is uh, it leverages a continuously updated upstreams uh, configuration file and updates with ECS service changes. He also reads a configuration bundle from S3 and updates it automatically as a configuration gets updated. But let's, let's have a look how uh, everything fits together in a nice to understand diagram. At the top, the traditional AWS VPC, you have your ECS cluster, in this case with uh, three different instances. Each instance has a public IP and it's uh, reachable by the internet. Each instance is running ECS ingress as a daemon. So there's one instance of ECS ingress on each and every server that it's part of our cluster. And it's also running in host networking, binding to the host ports that we want to expose to the internet. ECS Ingress works very simply by continuously uh, querying the uh, ECS APIs and determining which services are running on which ports and reverse proxy to those services using internal networking. It also reads a configuration from um, S3 and the bundle is continuously uh, checked for freshness and in case of changes, the changes are deployed and automatically the configuration is reloaded. Now, how do we expose ECS Ingress to the world? Well, it's relatively easy. You just need to leverage the uh, capabilities to create multiple A records uh, for a specific uh, DNS entry that, for example, Route 53 or other cloud DNS uh, offering provide. If you bundle this up with uh, health checks uh, on the liveness and uh, health of uh, um, different servers, you can then have a truly highly available and self-healing uh, solution, just leveraging technologies like a DNS resolution that are, are pretty vendor neutral. So let's have a look at the basic configuration file to get started. If you're familiar with Nginx and how it's configured, this example shouldn't scare you. But if you're not, just have a look online. I have in the past created a series of blog posts that I will be linking at the bottom of this video to get you started with Nginx and to use some of the more or less known uh, features that the amazing open source tool provides. So the only key areas to actually highlight is the um, upstream configuration file that is continuously updated and kept up to date by uh, ECS Ingress for you, as well as the fact that uh, um, that config upstream configuration file defines an upstream for each service in your ECS cluster that can be referenced by name using the server name um, in your proxy uh, pass configuration um, elements. So it's very simple. If we want to actually have HTTPS, all we need to do is to deploy the certificates together with the Nginx configuration uh, in the same bundle, and they are then unzipped automatically in the same location. So it's uh, fairly simple to do, deploy HTTPS. It is also possible to do um, TCP tunneling. Many people don't know, but Nginx offers out of the box Rebux proxy and capability uh, for TCP servers as well. This was one of the reasons why the solution with the ALBs and network load balancer wasn't great because we specifically needed a, a solution where on behind the same DNS name, we would have listening to um, both a TCP server as well as an HTTP server. Now this is possible with ECS Ingress. The example in this case is uh, for a reverse proxying of the MQTT server. But we can even take the example to uh, a different level and try something a little bit more advanced. We can deploy PostgreSQL on the cluster, set the volume to an EFS volume, which is Elastic File System from AWS, so we have persistence, set the number of desired instances to one, and again, reference the, that instance through the upstream file, which is continuously kept up to date. And as long as we keep, uh, we put the keep alive on, we can then create effectively a reverse proxying capability towards PostgreSQL. So 
Um, the only element that remain to look after is the security aspects. Obviously, you don't want to expose the database to the world. And that can be easily taken care of by leveraging the fact that in uh, Docker, every container uh, gets access to the host using the magic 172.17.01 IP uh, address so that if you actually set up a configuration allowing access only from internal containers, you actually achieve the results that you wanted. What are the gotchas of using this tool? Well, it's really important to understand that a valid engineer configuration is required to start the container itself. So if you don't have a starting point, then the container will continuously crash. Also, we consider um, among the tasks that are um, made available for a service, we consider only the running tasks. So if you have a particularly complex um, uh, deployment with uh, blue, green, and multiple types of uh, versions of the same application running at the same time, this may not work for you. Also, ECS Ingress uh, combines the Nginx logs as well as the Golang ones. And this is also to leverage the fact that we have one real executable running and this makes ingestion of the logs into CloudWatch really easy. Under the hood, it uses polling every 10 seconds to query the ACS um, um, cluster using the APIs, and these API calls are metered, but the S3 calls are metered. And obviously we have a roadmap of changes we were looking into, and one of those is definitely improvements in the polling mechanism. I'm not a big fan of polling, it's quite inefficient. We also wanna add notifications uh, and Slack hooks in, so that we're notified when changes are happening to a cluster. We also wanna roll out automatic Route 53 or other cloud DNS updates so we don't have to manually set up the um, A records with all the public IPs of the servers of our cluster. Uh, more advanced uh, for a later stage is in, will be the integration with Let's Encrypt for the generation of uh, SSL certificates automatically, as well as uh, moving to OpenResty. OpenResty is an Nginx distribution that uh, bundles Nginx together with uh, a Lua just-in-time compiler module so that uh, part of a configuration can be made dynamic and when that uh, configuration elements get um, read by Nginx, they're actually resolved through Lua scripts that can connect to a database, read for a local cache. Why moving to OpenResty? If you look at uh, Nginx Ingress uh, from the Kubernetes project, it leverages uh, OpenResty because ECS Ingress is designed to schedule the config reload in case of changes, but using OpenResty, this is not necessary. Why would you wanna avoid a configuration reload? Well, it's very simple. A uh, configuration reload causes Nginx to kill all its child processes in a nice and ordered way, but still kill them and spawn new processes. If your server is under heavy load, you may have uh, big hiccups on the traffic patterns and you may wanna avoid this. And that's it. The tool is available open source online on GitHub. Please have a look, open an issue, send a pull request, or just get in touch with me. Uh, the contact details are available on the slide, as well as at the bottom of my um, video. Thank you.